today we're going to be making a cave wall, usually made for cichlids, but in this case I'm going to make a 10 gallon. And I've already got the pieces cut so we can get started quickly. Some of the items you'll need, of course, is vinyl gutter. It's U style. I had to special order it in from Home Hardware, but in a bigger town you, it might be in stock. You also need Aquarium Safe Silicone. This is a cheaper brand that I can get at Home Hardware as well. If you check on the side, it says safe for aquariums. And I use it for a lot of things on the DIY site. Get a lot of ideas. You need cable ties, these suction cups, something to cut with, snips, jigsaw to make holes. You can always use hole tool here, here for a drill. That's what I do with my other projects. I'm going to be using suggestions that have been made on the DIY site and I'm not going to be making the small holes, uh, perfect holes, they're going to be a little more creative. also need a drill, a hacksaw, it's good to have a tape measure all the time. And the lava rock you can get just about anywhere. It comes in about seven or eight pound bags, about three to five dollars a bag. And these have been boiled and washed because they're very dusty. And they're all different, so most of them are fairly red to black in color. You'll also need a throw sheet when it comes to actually siliconing. So when it comes to making cuts, you want to make it an inch less than the tank length on the inside. Why? Because I don't want to scratch it when I'm installing it. So it's good to have a little play left to right. So you leave about an inch, maybe two inches. I've also sandpapered this a little bit so that it's not as smooth. Because then the silicone will stick a little better. Now that we've got the pieces that we want together, and the way to measure this, this is the height of the tank. The height of the tank is just over a foot. We want to go just a little bit below the height of the tank, so we don't want it to interfere with the filter. So we're going to make this our top piece. So now we got to figure out where we're going to put our heaters and our filters. I'm going to put the heater here, so I'm going to make a mark about the size of the heater with a little extra space. It doesn't have to be perfect as so long as the heater fits in. And I'm going to make the filter go here. So now we made our mark. Now we use the snips to cut it out. Be a little tricky. And we just pop it back and forth a few times. And it should just snap. See now we have our cuts made, our cuts for the heater, and our cuts for the filter. And this is going to sit on the back of the tanks. It doesn't look good right now, but we'll get to that part later. Now we're going to put the pieces together. For that we're going to use cable ties. Pretty simple. We're going to use the drill to make some holes. I don't know if you can see this, but we're going to make some holes. Only one, t maybe just three holes on each thing. Okay. Now we've got our three pieces together. You can see the cable ties. 
We're just going to clip the ends off of them. It looks a little curved, but it's not going to matter because once it's siliconed, it'll flatten out. And I also cut a few extra holes in the top piece that is going to be for attaching it to the aquarium. But that will come later, but it's good to have the holes there now. Now that we have all our pieces together, we're ready to plan our design of how we want the holes to look. So you grab your pencil and keep in mind where the heater or the heater and the filter are gonna go because we don't want a hole over top of those. So now we're just going to make random shapes. This is our chance to be creative. Sorry about the camera work, I'm not used to this. Really, you can do anything with it. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you want. Now we're going to cut our cut out our holes with the jigsaw. Now that we have our holes cut out, we're going to take some sandpaper and just sand down the edges because it's very rough. So we don't want the fish to get hurt. So we're going to file those edges down. Okay, now comes the time consuming part. We've got our drop sheet ready to go. Got all our rocks that we need, silicone ready. Can't stress enough having gloves on. So now we're gonna we're gonna start at a corner and work our way. We don't want to start start in the middle and work out. I've done it before and it doesn't work out too well. <coughs> so we want the rocks nearby so we can pick and choose what we want. It's like a big puzzle. So I'm probably going to start this corner and work my way into the middle. And when siliconing the rocks, put the silicone on the rock first, then place the rock. If you place it on here, you're just going to waste a lot of silicone. So we'll see how it works. Now we got all the rocks glued. So it's basically put together. Then they got white instead of clear, but it's just for the last 10 rocks or so. After it cures, which will be about 24 hours, we'll start trimming these little pieces off of silicone. We'll trim it off with a knife. I'll just tidy it up a little bit more. Okay, it's been a few days since we've glued all the rocks on. Uh, it only needs about 24 hours to cure. Now we're going to I'm going to show you how to attach it to the aquarium. And that can be a bit tricky, but not too hard. Gathered a few scraps of vinyl eaves trough and made a few panels like this. We only need one or two for a ten gallon size. We're gonna drill a few holes in it so that we can put the suction cups in. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in the middle of these panels so that we can put them in. So now we have our hole drilled. Let's see if I can get this on camera as to how to put it together. Okay, we got to make sure we get the right end. Uh, this is going to be the end we want up. nice and clipped in. Now we pick a spot that we want it. And this, that's the top. So I'm just going to probably put it uh, probably right here so that when you look in the holes you can't see it too well. Okay, now we got suction cup in. I'm just going to do one. So it's only for demonstration anyway. So now, as you see, it's in. 
And when it sits in there, it's offset so it can sit flush against the back of the fish tank and still uh, have enough room for the suction cup. Now since there's ledges in here, that doesn't come up very much. So we don't even need to silicone it on. I don't bother. And that way we can move it if we don't like where it is for some reason. Okay, now let's take it to our demo tank here. It's not a 10 gallon tank. It's just a 15 gallon long, just to demonstrate. Look at it from the back. See, it would take a lot of pressure to to reef that off of there, so it's good the way it is. Now I'll demonstrate how to attach this to the top. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to attach this to the back of the tank. And believe it or not, this can be still done with the fish in the tank. I've done it before. What you do, you've got your holes lined up. You just take a container, line it up against the back, and then drill down through the ledge here. Try not to miss. Now work a hole back and forth. Kind of a sawing motion. Okay. Clean up all the little pieces of plastic that fall off. Keep them in your container so that the fish don't start to eat them. Then put another hole where you want the other one. not good for your drill bit so take your time. Okay. Wish I had a 10 gallon tank for this, it would make more sense. Oh, I missed the hole, so it doesn't matter, this is a scrap tank. So now we have spot four zip ties. Put it up through the hole. Sorry about that, my batteries ran out right when I was doing what I was doing. Now it's attached and we got it attached just below the ledge. Right there, that's all we need. And the heater would go down through, filter down through. So now we'll take a look at the back. Let's see if this uh, if I had the right tank this would be better, but the suction cup would be here and it'd be flush against the back and the fish can swim in and out any way they please it's a nice addition to the tank uh, thanks for listening and looking at my video for those who enjoyed the video about building an aquarium background this is what it can look like on a large scale I'm very glad I did this project if anyone actually does this, I actually want to see what they did.